I really like the aspect that no one's looking at their cell phone and people are in a room together doing something that just involves music and movement. Today we're going to learn about a nonprofit organization dedicated to preserving and passing along traditional music through lessons, workshops, dances and informal jams. Join us as we talk with Emily Morrison, Executive Director of the Front Porch Roots Music School. Come on! We opened in February of 2015 mm -hmm. and started it actually at my house and the reason was because it was just, we were testing the idea. Um, and it lasted for that spring and, and actually the test was really successful in that I had said we would do it for six weeks at my house. Then we'd assess and see if it seemed like a great plan. But after six weeks, people had these relationships with their teachers uh -huh. and no one wanted to stop. And it just kept going from there. It was like but you, you never started stopped. it because... I remember having this sort of epiphany about wanting there to be a place in Charlottesville where people could learn how to play music and play it together as beginners. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up playing music and had taken a job as a music director. I was doing it with children and at the same time I started playing the banjo. And so I was new at something as a you know 30 something year old and realized that it's hard to start something new and it's hard to find people to do it with, especially mm -hmm. when you're self-conscious about your skills. So I wanted to start a school where people could learn together and uh, explore roots music traditions, both people who are brand new to it and then also people who've been playing for a long time. Because you grew up playing this type of music, I traditional up, music, and, and with your family. Well, I, grew, I was actually a classically trained pianist and I grew up in a family of musicians who played sort of folk rock and roll oh. and I grew up in southern Virginia where this kind of uh, traditional bluegrass old time was played everywhere it was like the soundtrack to my early life so it was a mix it was a mix right and so but you understand why it's about community you completely oh, and you wanted to bring that here yes very much so tell me what what goes on here the core of the front porch is private lessons, group lessons, master classes, workshops as well, and we really encourage people to attend some of our community jams that happen most nights of the week. Hey! Well, I added three more beats. No, you did it perfect that time. That was great. I've really been able to get a better understanding of just song structure and, and how to play in a group. I mean, the ability to play with a group of people and contribute something that's fun and meaningful while everyone's sharing, it's, it's been really great. At the Front Porch, we teach American folk music primarily. This is one of many styles of music that grew up in this country organically, mostly in, played together in families or by friends and it's a way of people learning to communicate and get along and there are so many pressures in the modern world that tear us apart we need things that bring us back together again and back to the right and then you also have dances right yes we have dances very frequently traditional dances that range in genre. So we might have an Irish Cayley one week, we might have a Appalachian style circle dance or a square dance. Um, so people can expect to come to the front porch and dance at some point during the month. And then we do have perf a performance series that is intended to also be an educational experience. Right, and that's Tuesday Tunes that you have, one of your series, your that's music one, series. That's one series that we have is in the summer called Tuesday Tunes at James Monroe's Highland. But then we ha also have performance series that last throughout the year. So how is the organization run? You're the executive director. Yes, I'm the executive director. It's mostly run by volunteers. And we set it up that way initially because we want it to be a grassroots community effort where the people who are the most interested in this thriving and succeeding also are willing to 
help out to, to make events happen. So um, we have one paid employee who keeps the trains running on time, answers emails, answers the phones, helps people get registered for their classes, and then otherwise we have a whole team of volunteers who help support our events and our lessons. And then talk about your lessons. What what different what can people learn? What can they what can they study? Oh it's you could take private lessons in a number of different acoustic instruments ranging from fiddle to banjo, dulcimer, stand-up bass, guitar, mandolin. Um, and then our group classes are eclectic and interesting and they vary from year to year. An old time ensemble or a bluegrass ensemble. We have a blues jam that meets and we have blues style lessons that meet. Uh, we're really interested in offering gospel sings. We have an African drumming class that happens, world dance, world folk. Oh, so so it, of... I, I could go on and on. It yeah, really this is, is fantastic. It really is a broad spectrum. And how does it work? Do people pay for lessons? Is there financial aid if you yes. can afford? How does that work? So there is a fee for service and that's the that's the basis of our organization is mm -hmm. that people pay for their group lessons or their private lessons um, and then we pay our teachers. So when I say that our organization is run by volunteers, I really mean that just about the ad administrative support. Right. Uh, we It's a huge priority of ours that we support artists and we support right. musicians. Right. So we pay all of our teachers a competitive wage and we strive to keep the costs of our lessons low so that anyone can afford them. But we do also have a financial aid program and scholarship money available for anyone. The idea is that all people should be able, from any walk of life, should right. be able to come and, and study an instrument. I like learning new things and I've taken fiddle, I've taken dancing, and I've taken singing. Talk about some of the partnerships that you've had in the past. These are mm. exciting. So we have had this phenomenal partnership with a wonderful organization called International Neighbors that helps find and, um, and source after school activities for our refugee population in Charlottesville. And so we offer folk, world folk music and dance classes for the, these refugees who come from all over the world. And, and there are also, American children who are in these classes too, and the idea is to have a dialogue between these um, many different cultures around music and dance and the arts. We're, we will also offer outreach classes um, after school for any kid who wants to take African drumming can come and take it. So I'm reaching out to the Charlottesville City Schools to begin a partnership with them, um, especially because our new location is so um, right, so accessible. Now they, right we downtown. Talk yeah, yeah. yeah. talk about that. Being yes. downtown, it's, yes. good. it's exciting. It is really exciting. So we are right on Water Street, um, right one block from the downtown mall, and so it provides us with much more visibility and accessibility for people to come to us by foot, for um, many different people who, to see us when they are hanging out downtown, and then also we're just right in this artistic um, sort of nexus of the city. Yeah. There are a lot of great organizations downtown that we're excited to work with in yeah. the future. And you've done some work with the bridge and the precinct. Talk a little bit about that project. We did actually um, a whole evening devoted to local roots music to show these scholars who come to the area from Africa and they study at various presidential homes and at UVA. And so we helped present roots music for them where one of our instructors gave a talk about the African roots of the banjo and then we he did a beautiful demonstration of the way the banjo has evolved over time in America as an instrument that originally came over with slaves and then has changed over the years and that's something that many people don't know about. When they run, when they I want to hide So the history of this music is, I know it's important to you to share that with people. Why, why traditional music? This a whole area in Central Virginia is an, important in the context of traditional music. But additionally, roots music is itself the music of immigrants. 
of many different immigrant populations coming together and their art forms merging. And that's the piece that is the most important to me, that people begin to appreciate and understand the context for the ways that we can connect as a community, coming from many different places, many different backgrounds, right. and then having a conversation through the arts, through music. It's a different vocabulary. And there are, there are different versions of traditional music, and there are some people who, are, who feel it's very much one particular thing and others who feel it's one particular thing, but you like to just throw it all together, right? I'm interested in offering lots of opportunities to learn in lots of different contexts and also to begin to appreciate the ways that lines blur and that music is something that's very hard to point to it and say, that's what that is and name it. It has been traditionally, I think, you know, this is a circle of old time players, this is a circle of bluegrass players, I want to honor those traditions. Right. I think it's important. And I also and. <laughs> want the front porch to be a place where all of those traditions are explored and celebrated right. and others. I certainly don't want it to be just about bluegrass or just about blues, for example, right. but to really, be, really blur those lines and then start to look at the ways they can fuse together to create something new. So if people want to get involved, what do they do? There's a spectrum of involvement that ranges from helping take tickets at an event to helping us put together an event and really being part of the sort of key staff to showing up a lot and really getting to know us and joining the board. There are lots of different ways that people can, can volunteer. You all are doing so much already. What, what are your big goals for the future? My personal goals for the Front Park Porch are to really grow our outreach capacity and our partnerships so that we can begin operating not only just in our facility, but also in different school settings, in different community organization settings. And the mission is, of course, to, to bring people of all walks of life together through roots or traditional music. Does that old moon shine?